All right, in this video, we're going to go through some questions asked about New Zealand skimboarding and, of course, OXS skimboards. Stay tuned to find out the answers. Okay, welcome back to another video, everybody. I'm Sam Price from OXS Enterprises or OXS Skimboards down here in Bay of Islands, New Zealand. This video, as mentioned, um, is a bit of a QA. and a These were story questions story questions asked on Instagram a little while ago. I felt a few of them needed to be a little bit more in depth, so here we are. Before we get into the video, you can shop OXS merch like these camo snapbacks or hoodies like this with the Work Less Skim More logo on them at shop.oxsskimboards.com. Now a little bit of a background to OXS Skimboards. I started OXS Skimboards down here in New Zealand, uh, Omaha at the time in 2008. Have seen a lot of changes with New Zealand skimboarding um, and worldwide skimboarding and, and for that matter. Started with wood flatland skimboards and progressed as well in two wave boards in 2011. Have made a substantial amount of changes to business, product and things like that through the years. So here we are with a little bit of a Q&A. Now these questions are in no particular order. Nothing like that, we will be as simple to answer or as in-depth answer as I feel like. Starting now, the biggest bird you make for waves. This is of course the large crabber, um, huge surface area. It is shorter than some of the splurges but it is considerably wider, full of shape, kind of standard with surfboard skimble design throughout the world. How did you start making boards? Now I started with my mate Josh, who I've done a podcast on the whole New Zealand skimboarding thing a few years ago, I'll drop a card to that. We started with construction ply um, that was just sort of had been left around laying about um, with a suitable curve, we'd cut out and just make up a shape, throw some fiberglass at them, they weighed like six kilos and would skim for absolutely miles on the mud um, up Omaha Estuary and basically just went from there. The best places to ride close to Auckland. Now, close to Auckland, uh, as far as flatland go, there is some pretty quality flatland in Auckland. I will mention Eastern Beach out East Auckland, huge tidal pools can be a little bit shelly. Uh, pretty good tide windows, I believe that the tidal pools come out of the water every single low tide, uh, no matter how low that tide is. Worth the trip if you're into your flatland, worth taking a rail there, pretty good all round. Another spot hugely skimmed by us throughout the years was Cheltenham on Devonport. Good tidal pools providing it's a low, low tide. It, they don't actually come out of the water on all low tides, so that's something to note worth looking at tide charts. But can be a really good tide window and really quality tidal pools, of course, quite close to Auckland at Devonport. Now, why we're a window home area up at the Hibiscus Coast, the best flat land available in Auckland and what I would class as, as near to Auckland, Typically what we've found throughout the years if why is no good window home will be and vice versa They can the spots actually can be quite shelly when they're no good But usually you just have massive tide windows like eight hours ten hours things like that of course around uh, Low tide and water poo out on the Manukau Harbour just um, like tidal uh, sorry not tidal non tidal streams that come out of the dunes haven't actually skimmed it much for flatland, uh, just due to its location, but that's somewhere that is a, a wor definitely worth a mention for flatland. As far as waves go, now most of Auckland's North Shore can have okayish wave skim. Watapu, again, out on the Manukau can have okayish wave skim. Auckland as a whole is not, doesn't really have quality wave skim. Now, Devon Matten at uh, up in Whangaparaa, he skims a hell of a lot of wave skim up around Whangaparaa, Red Beach. Uh, probably worth, I'll drop his little Instagram link down below, probably worth someone to talk to about that area. I don't know too much of it, but he seems to get some pretty good conditions around there from time to time. And that would be it. Do you reckon it's possible to get any pop on my Gromlin? Now all the boards I make, the Gromlin included, the, gr the Gromlin is the cheapest line. Now I replied with a photo of me popping and grabbing on a Gromlin. If you can't pop a Gromlin, you can't pop anything. It's really that simple. It is not the board, it is your ability. Now in terms of propping, I will finish with actual, you need to learn how to pop. You need to be running fast. You need to be in probably water that's yay deep. And the theory with popping, is that the more speed you have, the easier it is to pop. It's the compression of the board off the water, not off the bottom. So you do not want to be hitting the bottom, which is why you need slightly deeper. And it's the compression of water pressure. You know, you press the water down and it's the water pressure that pops the board into the air. It's up to you how to work that out from there on. Probably something I should go into more in depth at a later date. 
best places I've ever skimmed for flatland and waves. Now I skimmed a lot around uh, Vancouver and places around America into 2011. There's some really good waves skim there. Utah in the middle of nowhere, just in a river, a sandy river, just perfect, perfect flatland. A few places up around Canada, things like that. We have a lot of really quality, just as good as it gets wave skim here in New Zealand, which usually are around creeks or estuaries that come out onto the beaches. That seems to be the place that can hold really good wave skim a lot of the times can be non-tidal so you just have all day as far as wave skim go um the best wave skim i've ever had was at skim dolgens in aussie in 2011 i had an injured ankle at the time because i dislocated it a year earlier and it just wasn't feeling soft sand still um in new zealand you know cape maria van diemen has its day there's some other places in New Zealand, but I think Cape Maria Van Diemen up in the very top of New Zealand has some very good, good wave skim. Ever skimmed in Australia? Yep, Twi uh, twice. I've been, oh, sorry, I've been three times. I went in 2010 for a comp. No, I went, we went the first time in 2010, um, and then once in the 2011 for Flatland, both Flatland trips, and then at the end of 2011 for skim dolgens. Can you kickflip? No, I can't. They're hard and they are hurt, but they are possible. When should I consider getting a wave skim board? Now, I replied originally with when you want to get one. It is that simple. There is no step up to a wave skim board. It's not like it's going to magically transform something. They're a foam skim board. Get one when you're ready. What kind of shape are the rails on your boards? More boxy or tapered? Now, the wave skim boards are boxy. They do tight, taper slightly towards the nose and tail. I believe this is the best shape for rails. The wood boards are a... Uh, well, they're double routed. They're routed top and bottom, so it's like a it's boxy top and bottom. I should that's probably how I'd explain it. Different shapes for different purposes. Do you guys ever make wood skim boards? Now, this was obviously asked by someone who doesn't pay attention to much because the biggest, the backbone to access skim boards is wood skim boards. I have more models in wood skim boards. We sell more wood skim boards. My favourite board. Now at the moment it is my new model of Kingfish, I of course made myself the first one available because you've got to test it yourself to see if they're any good. Really enjoying that board, slowly getting towards uh, filling out a proper range for them. And of course my Slip Easy, Team Model Slip Easy, always a classic. There is really no drawbacks to the performance of that board. They're pretty much as good as they get for wave boards and flatland boards. Now this is a question local for me, where's the best skim spot in the Bay of Islands? This is a tricky one, I don't know a lot of good skim spots. Waitangi here, just down the road, can get pretty good good little wave skim down there, I've had a good couple sessions. Um, Elliot's Bay out to the east, that also can get pretty reasonable. As far as flatland, I haven't had any good flatland around the Bay of Islands, so still scratching, still trying to find spots. Um, you know, really if I'm going skimming and I've got a weekend or something, I typically go south or north of here now this is the last one coming uh this is kind of a double up question that i've added for any comps that is one of them and do you have hopes for a rise in skimboarding in new zealand now when we started skimboarding in new zealand in 2008 we have this huge surge of progression of number of riders and we also had crews around new zealand we had several crews this was with really minimal input it was just the time um right place right time i suppose and since then, there has been a lot of a lot of setbacks for skimboarding in New Zealand. My personal beliefs is that it's not up to my generation. I'm 34 now. I do not believe it is up to a bunch of 34-year-olds to be progressing skimboarding in New Zealand. The hardest thing for me here, and I think the hardest thing for probably you guys to hear, is that it is purely up to the younger generation. We need more 15 year olds, 16 year olds, 17 year olds skimboarding and we need you guys progressing. You do not need sponsorships. You do not need a free t-shirt. You do not need stickers. You do not need all this stuff that, what it appears to me a sense of entitlement brings. You need to go skimboarding. We used to run competitive competitions for Flatland um, in New Zealand to the point where we had a lot of competitive and solid riding skimboarders and this was because there was just things happening there was a, we had ages from 14 through to about 30 all riding at a very similar level i do not see this anymore um i talked to talk about myself personally and my level of progression for the sport i myself have scaled back a lot 
in recent times purely because the sport died here in New Zealand. It went back and now there seems to be a lot of um, the younger generation, and I'm trying not to sound like the old guy griping by saying this, the younger generation, all of you guys out there, all of you guys out there who contact me seem to want something in order to go skimboarding rather than just do it for the joy of going skimboarding. This is a very different approach. This is a very bad approach to skimboarding or any sport you may have. You shouldn't be doing it for recognition. You shouldn't be doing it to get any, earn money. You should be doing it to enjoy skimboarding. Now, and until this happens, um, we have considerably more resources for skimboarding in New Zealand now. We have information, we have boards, we have good pricing. You have cameras in your pockets in the form of a phone, which is what we didn't have back in 20, you know, 2010, things like that. The, you know, uh, there is no better time than to progress skimboarding in New Zealand from a younger generation. Uh, the reason I'm sort of excluding myself because I am 34 and I am one person. To hold the responsibility of a skimboarding scene on one person um, in New Zealand is ridiculous. I would rather, I would rather hinge it on 500 young people skimboarding and kind of a, a, as a collective movement. It doesn't even have to be 500. We could do with five kids in New Zealand progressing their own riding um, and skimboarding as a whole just for their own enjoyment and until that happens I don't really believe there's going to be um, a huge progression in skimboarding in New Zealand. On that note I do organise, um, have been trying to organise meetups and little you know little get togethers around New Zealand. We actually have one coming up very soon in Coromandel. There'll be details, there'll be a card up top and all the details for that will be down below over the school holidays which was pretty close to um, this video going live. So yeah, there, there you go, that's it. That is pretty much a wrap of those questions that I asked recently on Instagram. You can of course follow, follow me on Instagram at Skimboards or at OXS underscore enterprises. I will have all the social media links down below. You can of course find the link to buy OXS merch, which, which is a huge support for myself and for what we what I try to do here. Um, feel free to drop any comments, questions, anything down below. Shoot me any information I think I need or uh, just anything you would like to know. Feel free to ask any way you know how. That is just a little Q&A on skimboarding in New Zealand. I'm Sam Price. I'll see you at the beach.